Lai Lau, Campbell, and uh, Chin Lee, and Deputy Mayor Min and Wong, and I'm uh, glad they're uh, here with me this morning. Um, and I want to say something right off the bat uh, so that we're very clear. Uh, today, the City of Toronto is $170 million better off than it was yesterday. And indeed, cities across Ontario are better off to a substantial uh, tune in terms of money than they were yesterday. And let there be no mistaking why that's the case. Because this city and its council showed leadership, put forward a plan to address our challenges, and showed we were ready to put skin in the game. As you all know, the City of Toronto sent a very clear message in December through its council. We put forward a plan to make serious investments in transit that will help fix traffic congestion in Toronto and help fix it through the region. As mayor and as a city, we recognized the fact that it was time for decisive action. I knew it, the council knew it, and the people of Toronto certainly know. As our city and its surrounding region continues to grow, it has become too hard for people to get around. Traffic and commute times are unacceptable. And after years of underinvestment, our transit system just isn't big enough to serve our residents and riders from across the region. And our city presently lacks the resources to deal with this issue on our own. This is not about funding any one project. In fact, it's about funding $33 billion worth of unfunded projects that we need to build over the next 20 years. Projects ranging from the relief line to old age homes and affordable housing. All things which cannot and should not be financed by property taxes alone. I've been honest with people. Addressing these challenges is necessary and it does not come for free. And so we put forward a plan. The plan rejected a short-sighted sale of Toronto Hydro. And it recognized the fact that you cannot fund $33 billion in infrastructure needs through double-digit increases in people's property taxes. That is not affordable for the people of Toronto. It is not what property taxes were meant to finance on expenditures and investments of that scale. Instead, our city came together after an analysis of the different choices around a fair, effective plan to introduce tolls on the Gardner and the Don Valley Parkway, asking everyone to pay their fair share for roads they use. According to a report on revenue options by city staff, this action would have raised up to $300 million each year that would then have been directly invested and only invested in transportation and transit expansion projects, easing the financial pressure that our city faces and creating room to finance other high priorities, for including, for example, housing. City Council overwhelmingly supported this plan. A strong majority, 32 of us on Council, 80% of those voting on this motion, chose to demonstrate courage and stand up for road tolls. The majority of the public understood that this was the right thing to do and represented a fairer approach than massively raising property taxes across the board. And they recognized as well that it was a smarter approach than selling Toronto Hydro. As a direct result of the plan put forward by the City Council, the provincial government announced today that it will double the gas tax allocation to Ontario cities. This change is expected to provide the City of Toronto with $170 million a year once fully implemented. This is $170 million in stable, predictable funding that Toronto did not have <laughs> yesterday. And I'm proud of the leadership of Toronto and its City Council <clears throat> and that that leadership has resulted in this new funding and a better deal for cities across Ontario, including Toronto. And so I thank the Premier and the Government of Ontario for that increased investment for us, for our residents, and for residents of all Ontario cities. But the province has also opted to deny Toronto City Council the regulatory change necessary for us to toll our own roads as permitted under the City of Toronto Act. It's interesting to note that this is the same government that has introduced toll lanes on one of its own highways in the GTA and has plans for more. The gas tax increase they have announced is less than what Toronto would likely have been able to raise on its own with a simple regulatory change by the government of Ontario. Yes, it saves us the implementation costs of a tolling system, but it denies us the long-term control over this aspect of our own finances. And so the gas tax increase is an important step, but it cannot be the only step. 
By denying this regulatory change, the province has severely impacted the city's ability to solve its own fiscal challenges and invest in its priorities. For far too long, Toronto and other big cities across the country have been forced to ask permission to adequately take care of their own residents within a range of ways and not be solely reliant on property taxes. And this is the latest in a series of paternalistic responses that undervalue municipal autonomy and the priorities of Toronto's nearly 3 million residents. We cannot continue this way. The housing and roadways that the province has downloaded to Toronto over time, <coughs> along with the gradual shift to Toronto of responsibility for things like refugee settlement, housing, harm reduction, these things, this downloading, has increased the pressure on our city, on our services uh, provided to nearly 3 million people. This was a government which seemed to understand the distinct needs of Ontario's largest city, Ontario's economic engine. Canada's economic engine. And while we do end up with some much needed new funds, the province has limited Toronto's ability to determine its own destiny and address its own challenges and to take accountability and responsibility for that as we've been encouraged to do for some time. Simply put, Toronto is being forced to contend with major issues like housing and roads and childcare that previously had greater funding participation by the Government of Ontario and then told that we are not able to take the responsibility we choose to take or to take the measures that we choose to take uh, to, uh, to address those financial needs. We are being denied any real ability to choose how we can pay for those things. That is short-sighted and it is not right and it will ultimately hurt the Ontario residents who need transit and housing the most. Nous avons maintenant une promesse de beaucoup d'argent pour la transportation en commun. Merci à le conseil pour le leadership. Mais nous ne savons toujours pas quelle aide nous obtien obtiendrons si nous pouvons pas agir sur notre propre, au sujet des choses comme le logement ou garde d'enfants. So I look forward to all provincial leaders taking further actions to address the city's transit, transportation and housing needs, including the serious repair crisis facing our social housing system that the city has so far been tackling alone to the extent of $1 billion in property taxes. Toronto has demonstrated that it is willing to do the right thing to make some hard choices on behalf of our residents and our region and to be honest with people about what is required to serve them better. Today, we are $170 million closer to a solution. But this is not the solution. If we are to be made more reliant on provincial funds and denied ways to be more self-sufficient, then we need to know what the province's plan is to further increase support for our city, especially for vital issues including the waterfront, including childcare, and including housing. If we're not to be allowed to do it on our own, if we're repeatedly to be told that this measure or that measure is not within the options available to us, then it is incumbent upon provincial leaders, all of them, to step up and say how we are going to be able to make the investments we need to make in order to make sure this remains one of the most livable cities in the world. Uh, I'm happy uh, to answer your question. Paternalistic and short-sighted, uh, those sound like fighting words for you. Are the gloves off now with the province? Well, I mean, it's a good news, bad news day. I mean, we are $170 million further ahead today than we were yesterday, and it is solely, I think, on account of the leadership shown by this council uh, in uh, saying we are prepared to stand up and be counted on the need to invest in transit and fixed traffic, for example. But I find it uh, just something that's inexplicable that we can have a government of Ontario over time that downloads a whole lot of things to the city, roads and housing, a whole lot of other things, then passes the City of Toronto Act to say, here, we're going to give you some of the means to address those things, including in particular the financial needs created by that downloading, and then turns around and says, with respect to some of the very same provisions in that act that we could use, no, you can't use those. And I just think that is something that is uh, not going to allow us to move forward in the way that we need to move forward to serve all of the people, especially some of the most vulnerable people. All right, we can just do this one at a time. We'll go around this way, and we'll go that way, and we'll go in this, okay? Yes. I never use those kinds of words because I don't think they're constructive. Uh, premier Wynne is still going to be the Premier this morning and tomorrow morning, and I look forward to continuing to work with her. 
but I think in this instance um, they have chosen a path uh, that is not respectful of the uh, autonomy of the City of Toronto and its, uh, its ability and its accountability for deciding its own destiny when it comes to uh, some of the ways we're going to pay for uh, roads and transit and for that matter free up resources for housing um, and uh, I, I regret that but going forward as I've said if they want to uh, adopt a regime that sort of says we're not allowed to raise this money in this way and that way and this way and that way um, then I would expect they'll be forthcoming with a lot more money than what they've started with today especially when it comes to something like housing where we've been uh, asking politely and respectfully and repeatedly and firmly uh, for help with the social housing repair in particular and received uh, very very little I'll go back even though I was going to go around this way Will you, will you ask council to relitigate long-term revenue tools? The road tools is never going to be enough to cover all of our capital needs, but with that gone, we only have some some levy money coming towards those projects. What will council do now? I think we'll have to obviously uh, re-examine this, but my first priority uh, is to go to the province and say, well, look, if we are going to be denied the ability under the legislation that you put in place to help us with things you downloaded uh, to us, then we would expect you are going to step up and finance these things, and today is a good start, but it's only a start. And so I'd want to sort of find out what they're planning to do to help us with housing, which is not a new ask, um, and uh, examine those kinds of things and what the answers are from both, quite frankly, the Premier and the leaders of the other parties, because I think we are getting close to an election, and I think it is important that we should find out uh, what uh, other people think should be done to address uh, some of Toronto's needs which are not met uh, in, in full uh, by any means uh, by this announcement today, as good news uh, as it is in terms of uh, more money that wasn't available yesterday. With, with, uh, without this Well, I mean, we have a whole suite of transit projects. It's a 15-year plan. It totals many billions of dollars. And, of course, as I mentioned, there are other projects that, had we had the toll money for transit and transportation, would have freed up funds for things like housing. And so we obviously have to go back now and look at uh, what, what, is, what is the good news side of this, which is how much will the $170 million a year in new money do for us in terms of uh, uh, the transit and transportation equation in particular, uh, and then see what the needs are and, and go back through an analysis of where we stand now after this denial of something uh, wholeheartedly endorsed by the council um, and this uh, new money that is coming uh, alongside that denial. Does it kill anything, any of the projects? No, no it does not. I, I just have said I'd go in order, David. Okay. Just that I'll get around, I promise. I, I, so and I think Randy was actually next, at least in terms of voice carrying. This, this seems to be pretty much all politics. How badly does the relationship between Toronto and the province, and more specifically the relationship between you and Ms. Wynne, been my relationship with Premier Wynne is a strong, uh, open uh, relationship. Uh, she's been more than willing uh, to so sit down and... Uh, sorry, can I answer the question? It's been a strong, open uh, relationship. Uh, she's been willing to sit down and talk to me about a lot of things, including road tolls. I will tell you that the course of action that unfolded today and that we knew about a few days ago, we knew the direction in which it was going, is inconsistent, uh, at least in, in part, in, in some considerable measure, with the discussions we were having before uh, on this subject. But she is the Premier of Ontario, and she's been uh, straightforward with me in our discussions about things. And I intend uh, to see her next week again, as we do, and uh, raise this issue that I've been raising with you today, but a host of other issues that we raise on an ongoing basis and I hope uh, we can continue to have a productive relationship because after all what we are here to do, Premier Wynne, myself, Prime Minister Trudeau and all the people uh, that we work with um, is to advance the interests of uh, Toronto at least for myself and, and uh, I intend to continue to do that whether it's on housing or transportation or anything else. You know, would the gas tax funding not cover what was made in road tolls because the Premier believes your numbers, 300 million, is completely off and that it's much less than that. Well, I will say that I gave an example uh, at the time we introduced road tolls of uh, $2 each way, no dynamic pricing, no uh, you know, exemptions, this, that, and the other thing. It was an example. But I think you can look at the reports and see uh, that uh, it was uh, contemplated that depending on what other decisions you made about different things, that you could have taken in uh, a number that was higher than that. And that was precisely what we had sent our city officials uh, off to work on, uh, on the notion that uh, the province had said they weren't going to stand in the way of what we were trying to do. So they were working on that, but I think there was a range of numbers depending on choices you made, and those choices hadn't yet been made. So I can only say to you that while $200 million was one number that was put out there, including, I think, by me, uh, there were other numbers in the reports and elsewhere that were $300 million, and there were other numbers that were less. So all I can say is uh, this is a significant sum of money, $170 million, but it 
probably doesn't meet up to what the tolls would have produced, and it certainly doesn't meet up uh, to our needs uh, in terms of the kind of stable, predictable funding we need to address all of the issues that we have, which include not just transit and transportation, although that's important, but also include things like housing. The first discussion I'm going to have is with the Premier and her ministers, and I'm going to ask this question. If the Government of Ontario has downloaded things like the highways and like housing to the City of Toronto, and if the City of Toronto Act was meant to allow